Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we turn to talking about possibly reopening this country after our extensive lockdowns due to this terrible health crisis. This has been an ongoing debate for a while now that's been getting very touchy-feely recently. Some places have started to reopen. Some states like, say, Florida and other ones on the coast, some, uh, not so political ones are reopening and then at the same time democrats are trying to keep things locked down as hard as possible they don't want the economy to return they don't want people to get back to work because it'll look good we'll get better things are going to do well things are going to start to turn around for the better so the democrats are all doom and gloom and they're being supported by a very interesting and possibly nefarious character named dr fauci dr fauci has been this head doctor guy in the government for many decades now and now he's still in there talking about viruses and stuff he's in charge of that department and he's been the one leading saying oh we can't reopen we have to keep locked down he wants to keep us locked down for the, another year i mean this guy is super extreme and also possibly politically motivated a lot of people want to preach and say he's like this godlike figure who could do no wrong but we know and have seen that he's been buddy buddy with people like the clintons and other administrations um he seems to not like Trump very much, although they do work together in a sort of uh, give or take kind of way. They both have positions of power, but they also don't seem to like each other. And Fauci has some questionable motivations, to say the least, but also, he's just one doctor. He's not the only person in this country. He's not the only expert. And recently, there's been someone getting very brave and calling them out. His name is Senator Rand Paul, who is also a doctor, by the way. He's a physician, definitely not as technical or as specific as the viral doctor, Dr. Fauci, but still, we're talking about another doctor. We're talking about a guy who also caught the virus, and he's trying to speak back against Fauci, saying, we possibly need to reopen. And a lot of people are saying, Rand Paul really served Dr. Fauci in a recent hearing in the Senate. It's very interesting, a great video. Here's a tweet from Joey Salads with a clip, and it's very interesting, very funny. But before we even get to that, I want to talk about Francesca Fiorentini kind of going after Rand Paul. Here, here's how you know Rand Paul is making good moves. It's when the leftists go to attack him, and Francesca's trying to make one of her classic terrible jokes. She, of course, hosts News Broke. She, of course, is pro-communist and all that stuff, and she hates America. And that's why she's going after this guy, and she's saying he literally looks like the virus, and he's mimicking the symptoms and stuff like that, which I think is is a little offensive since the guy already had the virus like he's a legit survivor he's also a doctor trying to speak up for the country speak up for his constituents but also this isn't surprising coming from a leftist but that's besides the point let's get to the actual video the actual story because it gets really interesting seeing Rand paul talk trash to dr fauci check this out as much as I respect you, Dr. Fauci, I don't, I don't think, think you're the end all. all. I, don't I don't think you're the one person that gets to make a decision. decision. We can listen to your advice, but there are people on the other side saying there's not going to be a surge and that we can safely open the economy, and the facts will bear this out. But if we keep kids out of school for another year, what's going to happen is the poor and underprivileged kids who don't have a parent that's able to teach them at home are not going to learn for a full year. And I think we ought to look at the Swedish model and we ought to look at letting our kids get back to school. I think it's a huge mistake if we don't open the schools in the fall. Great point. Well put. Uh, I like the way he calls Fauci out to his face almost. I think Fauci actually is chiming in digitally. He's like Skyping into this meeting. So he's not in the room, but he is speaking to him directly, virtually to his face. And I find it very interesting what he said. First of all, saying Fauci is not the end all be all. Like I was trying to say in the intro here. He's not this godlike figure who can never do no wrong. He's not perfect. Everyone has their personal opinions. People can get stuff wrong or right about certain things. Now, I do recognize he's an expert. I'm not denying that. I'm not denying any science or facts here. This isn't a tinfoil hat kind of moment. It's just saying there are conflicting opinions. So if you disagree with Fauci, that doesn't make you a crazy person. That doesn't mean you're Mel Gibson in that conspiracy movie. No, it means that you're considering other information, like Ron Paul here is. He's a respected senator from Kentucky, been at this job for many years, also a doctor, also a survivor, and this is his thoughts on it, and he makes good points. He follows up talking about keeping schools closed for a year is going to be detrimental to the poorest of the poor kids. It's going to put kids back. It's going to create this big rift, a bigger rift than we already have. I mean, we already are going to be in a new world after we re recover from this health scare. It's going to be a new normal. Nothing's going to get back to normal, normal for a very long time, but in addition, if we make it worse and worse, if we shut down for over a year because some crazy doctors or it's you know 
over-the-top liberals don't want to give up their power, that's really going to hurt us. And it's really going to set us back even further than we need to be. And I think a lot of us are also considering the political motivations. The longer we shut down, the worse it's going to probably look for Trump. The liberals obviously have an agenda there. They want to take the government down and close the economy for as long as possible. This is literally what they say. I actually quoted a person who said this. I just quoted that Francesca chick earlier. And she had a video which we covered where she said that. She wants the economy to shut down as long as possible. They want the country to totally stop for months and months because they pretend they care about lives and they care about saving people and stopping this spread. But really, they care about power. They want to control things. They want to stop us from reopening. That way they can stop Trump from winning re-election, possibly, hopefully for them. I don't think that's going to happen, but this is obviously their agenda. First of all, uh, Senator Paul, uh, thank you for your comments. I, I have never made myself out to be the end all and only voice in this. I'm a scientist, a physician, and a public health official. I give advice according to the best scientific evidence. There are a number of other people who come into that and give advice that are more related to the things that you spoke about, about the need to get the country back open again and economically. I don't give advice about economic things. I don't give advice about anything other and public health. Okay, I mean, those are sorts of fair points, but I think he's being a little misleading, a little dishonest. He's trying to backpedal away from the fact that, yeah, he's recommended some pretty extreme stuff. He's trying to be low-key political, possibly. And then in addition to that, I think uh, back to Ron Paul's point, the point he was trying to make is that these doctors, these guys, this is an expert, but he's not an actual political operative. He's not an elected official. He hasn't been voted in. He was appointed many decades ago, and I'm sure he's still uh, very credible, but he wasn't elected. He's not a leader that was voted in by us, the voters, the country, the people of the United States of America. Those are the people meant to make decisions like this. They take the advice of doctors like this guy, and they consider facts and figures and other stuff, but at the the end of the day, it's the people voted in and it's their choices. People like President Trump, people like Ron Paul, other senators, and um, that includes Democrats and Republicans. Now, Democrats are, and Republicans disagree on a lot of things and there's a lot of political motivations there. And that's why you got to think, what's the issue? How come all the Democrats want to keep things closed and lock down and shut down the government for so long? And how come the Republicans want to reopen and get things back to normal, let people work, let people make money again? There's definitely motivations under there, but I think it's definitely also fair to say the Democrats are on the bad side of this. They're trying to keep us locked down for longer. They're politically motivated. They don't care about health because at the end of the day, a lot of people are going to die if this stuff is locked down longer, too. The solution could be worse than the problem in this situation, and we hate to see that, and we hate to see a political kind of coup happen to to sort of kind of sabotage Trump's re-election in 2020, which happens in November. So I wanted to respond to that. The second thing is that you use the word we should be humble about what we don't know, and I think that falls under the fact that we don't know everything about this virus. And we really better be very careful, particularly when it comes to children, because the more and more we learn, we're seeing things about what this virus can do that we didn't see from the studies in China or in Europe. For example, right now, children presenting with COVID-19 COVID who actually have a very strange inflammatory syndrome, very similar to Kawasaki's syndrome. I think we better be careful if we are not cavalier and thinking that children are completely immune to the deleterious effects. Okay, I think he's pointing out some other kinds of outlier situations. There's a few kids who had a few other symptoms. Understandable too, like we want to take in his advice. We want to consider his points. There's nothing wrong with getting an opinion, but do we have to all focus on the Fauci opinion? That's the point that Ron Paul was making. We've seen other doctors and other experts chime in on the other side. And then a lot of these politicians and these players, these governors, these presidents, people, leaders of cities, they're the ones making the decisions based on 
multiple factors and it's not just Fauci. The other factors are the people, what they want to do. We want to address freedom, like people have a freedom of choice if they want to get back to work and they have the right to do that. If they especially if they have a smaller work environment where they could social distance, be safe, have their masks on. You know, if you want to reopen even some restaurants and have everyone separate. There's different circumstances for everything and in this case, we're talking more about kids and schools. And if there was a big issue, like if, say, thousands of kids were dying all because they went back to school, then we'll shut them down again. I mean, we got to quit trying to play, oh, we're going to predict, we're going to stop. I understand the idea of trying to you know, be precautious, but at some point you're being too precautious and you're staying in your bunker and you're just kind of making everyone else scared. Just because you're scared doesn't mean you get to infringe on other people's freedoms. If they want to get out there, if they want to even put their kids out there, that's understandable. I don't want to endanger any kids. Don't get me wrong either. I know that's a touchy subject. We don't want the kids to get sick at school, but we also don't want to close the schools for much longer than we need to. If that's what it takes, if we could get the schools reopened and then possibly there's also this talk about herd immunity. There's another mention of the Sweden model there. We talked about Sweden in another video where we actually got a little bit controversial because I was talking about Sweden maybe should have locked down and other people in the comments, a lot of viewers, you guys thought they shouldn't have locked down or maybe you thought they shouldn't lock down now. I kind of was not very clear because I was more talking about in the beginning, a lot of countries should have locked down. Sweden had more deaths than its neighbors, so they possibly should have locked down. But we're past the point in a lot of places, especially in America, we're past the point of considering lockdowns. Lockdowns already happened. We're not necessarily trying to start any new ones. We're talking about reopening old ones. And that's the big issue that's the buzz topic of this week, of this month. Everyone's discussing it. And a lot of people think Ron Paul is serving Dr. Fauci in this premise. So again, you're right in the numbers that children in general do much, much better than adults and the elderly, and particularly those with underlying conditions. But I am very careful and hopefully humble in knowing that I don't know everything about this disease. And that's why I'm very reserved in making broad predictions. Okay, and I think a good point here is these doctors are meant to be as cautious and reserved as possible. Now, it's not to say we're trying to be, he says, cavalier. We're not trying to be too bold and aggressive with reopens. I think we're already at a point where it's a fair kind of trade-off. But the doctors are always going to tell you to stay home longer, to watch and avoid stuff as much as you can. I mean, that's just their job to be precautious. you got to consider that factor. They're going to always say you know, lock down longer, stay closed. And in addition, we have these ideas that possibly, you know, there's political motivation behind that. But that's really besides the point here. The idea is this doctor is being, you know, as cautious as possible. And that makes sense too, because he's in charge of this viral, this sort of department. He's the director of this NAID, N-I-A-I-D director. That's that national you know, a national disease organization used to dis to study these kinds of things. So he's, of course, going to say to lock things down. He's going to be as precautious as possible because he's the one that's going to tell the whole country. They're going to count on his word. So it's going to be blamed on him if we reopen too soon. So it makes sense for him to be as defensive as possible. And then it also makes sense for people like Ron Paul and other representatives to actually consider reopening. And a lot of us want to reopen too, especially if you're like myself and you're in a less threatened region. I mean, 80% of this country is not seriously affected. They're not uh, a dangerous region. Most of this country is ready to go. It's only a few small sections, a few densely populated areas like New York City, parts of California, uh, even Chicago or Texas. Like There's certain places that are still bad, but the rest of the 80% of the country, they can consider it. We got to go do this state by state, city by city, and take our time. And you know, But at the same time, we don't need to wait another year to open every school in the country when there's only been so many cases in some of these smaller states like Wyoming only has a couple hundred thousand people. I'm sure they're ready to go. But at the same time, you know, New York City has millions of people in a small island and a small metro area, and they're going to definitely need longer wait. But we can't rule this country based on both of those things. We're a big, wide, varied country with lots of different demographics, lots of different areas. So that's why we have the state system, and that's why we got to do this case by case. 
Thanks for your time today, guys. That about wraps things up. Make sure you comment your thoughts on everything below. Do you think Ron Paul was right? Do you think he served Dr. Fauci? And what do you think about these reopenings? Should we be opening the country? Is it too soon? Comment your thoughts on everything below. Also, leave a like if you enjoyed this video. That really helps us get shared. And until next time, you guys have a great day.